This is a quick video uh, as a follow on to our virtual apps and desktops 1912 site setup video um, that I posted previously. I mentioned in that video because we're using SQL always on availability groups, um, we have to change our database connection string um, to include the multi subnet failover uh, equals true um, as part of our D, uh, DB connection string. Um, so this is the easiest way I find to do it and so I've used this method multiple times in the past and it works really well. Um, so on this article here, um, database connection strings uh, under the implementation guys, Citrix do a bunch of PowerShell scripts which do various uh, functions with the uh, DB connection strings. Um, you can null out the connections, uh, you can uh, change uh, the DB connection string to a different SQL instance. You can also add failover partner if you're using like mirroring. Um, they've also got the script here for the uh, multi subnet failover equals true. So we'll be going to use these. Um, if you come to this link here, uh, the download link uh, is on this page. Uh, you can click here and it takes you to share file and you can download the PowerShell scripts. So if we jump onto our delivery controller, um, this is the folder that contains the scripts. Um, that one's for the failover partner for, for SQL mirroring. Um, this is the one that we need. Um, change XD to multi subnet failover. Um, I'll show you quickly what I mean if I fire up uh, the ISE. Um, I'll show you the, data, the current database connection strings. So if I do add dash ps snap in. And then we'll do Citrix start. And then we'll do get dash command. And then we'll do star db connection start. And then we'll run these commands. So just to have a look at some of the FMA uh, database connection strings, uh, we'll just pick one randomly from here. So if we look at the broker DB connection, so we'll use this one here, copy that, paste that into there, and then we'll just run that line. You can see here, this is our current database connection string for that FMA service. Um, you can see it hasn't got the multi subnet failover uh, equals true in, in the connection string. Um, so as I say, this, this PowerShell script here will, will add that for us. Um, so I'm just going to change directory to the desktop. And then do a DIR. We'll do CD XD connection string scripts. And do a DR. And then this is the one that we're going to be running. Uh, the change XD to multi sub not failover.ps1. Um, if we go back to basically this article, it explains um, here why you need to add this as part of your DB connection string when using always on. Um, you can see here, if you use always on availability groups, Microsoft recommends that the connection strings includes multi subnet failover equals true. This option speeds up recovery when a high availability event occurs and is recommended for both single and multi subnet environments. Run this script once to add the option. If you must remove the option, use change XD to connection string to run the script again and provide the strings without the setting. So we're going to add this because as I say we've got our Citrix databases on our always on availability groups. Um, so it's best practice to have this set. So um, we're just going to run this PowerShell script now. So I'm just going to uh, get that run. Change XD to multi subnet failover. Press enter on that. Uh, continuing with this script will change your database configuration. If any errors occur, it may manual interview. Are you sure you wish to continue? Uh, yes, I am. So it's picked up both my delivery controllers, Blon CTX uh, DDC01 and DDC02. So it's currently going through, getting all the current strings, um, nulling out the strings, and then adding uh, the new string. I, I'd recommend doing this out of hours and obviously under change control because you are pretty much uh, nulling out your database connection strings and, and adding new ones. Okay, it's going through. We'll just wait for it to finish. 
Okay, it didn't error out, which which looks pretty good. Um, what I'll do is um, I've got another PowerShell script here um, that I run. Um, what this does, it just cycles through all the DB connections and it just checks the, the, the database connection string for each FMA service. So we'll just run that, paste that into there. Um, and you can see now our, our new uh, database connection string. It's got the uh, multi subnet failover equals true set. So the script has worked. It's added that to our database connection string. Um, it looks like all the FMA services have that DB string. Um, so it's not missed any. Um, there was no errors when the script ran. So it looks good. That looks fine. Um, what I'll quickly do as well is uh, as part of this, I'll also check the status of all the FMA services. Um, just to make sure they're reporting no issues. Place that into there. Okay, so all our service statuses are okay. Um, I'm just going to check the monitoring and the uh, logging database uh, strings as well. So get dash log uh, data store. Okay, multi subnet true on that. Yep. Brilliant. So the multi subnet failover true has been added on the login database. Let me just check the monitoring database as well. Okay. Yep. Multi subnet failover equals true. So it's been added to all our database connection strings for the login database, the monitoring database, and all the FMA services for the site database. So everything looks good. Um, I'm just going to quickly open Citrix Studio just to make sure um, everything's good. Okay, wait for Studio to open. Yep, Studio is open, no issues there. We can browse through each node within Studio, absolutely fine. So, yep, that change has worked. Um, I would recommend, as I say, I'd recommend doing this if you've got SQL Always On um, hosting your Citrix databases. I would definitely recommend adding uh, that multi subnet failover equals true to your DB connection string. It definitely helps uh, when there's failovers uh, on the cluster um, and it will definitely improve things. So that was it. Just a nice quick video. Um, I did mention I would show you how to do that in the previous video. So I thought I'd just quickly blast this one out. Um, the next video I'll be setting up and configuring Citrix Director. Um, we'll be load balancing Citrix Director, um, installing an SSL certificate for our director servers, setting up dedicated monitors, responder policies, um, single sign on for director as well. So stay tuned for that one. Um, I'll try to get that released um, ASAP. Uh, thanks for watching. Cheers. Bye.